Hi, my name is Jesse, and this video is for Comparative World Agriculture. I'm going to be focusing on the Southeast Asian area and the Association of Southeast Asian Nation Plus Three, which is Southeast Asia and includes countries like China and Japan. This group was created to create a single market and production base. Uh, they have five core elements that they were hoping for. That's free flow of goods, free flow of services, free flow of investment, free flow of capital, and free flow of skilled labor. I recently had the opportunity to be able to go visit four of these member states, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Japan. I'll show you some quick photos of some street vendor food, as well as videos and pictures of restaurant food and other food that I was able to first country I had the opportunity to visit was Indonesia. Approximately 90% of the population is involved in agriculture in Indonesia. And here are just a few pictures of the city of Jakarta. Upon arriving, I had the opportunity to sample some of the fruit. Uh, obviously, we see the apple, kiwi, pear, and orange, but stuff that was specific to the area is the salak, logun, and golden passion fruits. Um, here is a video of me trying some of the food. Okay, it's very slimy and it's very it's pretty good. Um the seeds uh obviously are crunchy. I, I hope you're supposed to eat those, but um I think I'm okay. It tastes pretty good. And this here, it almost looks exactly like a snake skin. I mean, it is just like a snake skin. And again, I guess I will try to figure out how to eat this. So I'll start with trying to kill it. No, okay, we'll start with trying to cut it. Oh, this seems hard. I think this might not even be anything you eat. Okay, interesting. Almost. Well, Let's see what. See how this one tastes. Oh, that's that's pretty bad. I guess it's kind of like a cross between a pear and apple. I think it's closer to a pear. And it's got like a seed in there. And then of course the other fruit we have is a uh, kiwi, which get quite frequently throughout the U.S. And then we have a, this looks like a pear. I'm assuming it's a pear. It's a, it's like a mild version of a pear. Also, mind you, I've uh, flown 42 hours, so everything kind of tastes different to me. Okay, next, I'll show you some different fruits and foods. That's a star fruit, satay, 
beef and chicken uh, with some peanut sauce. This is some chilies, which were very spicy. I actually enjoyed them a lot. Uh, some mangoes. Their mangoes are a little bit uh, more green than we have over here. And here's some spicy peanut sauce that is used to dip most stuff in. Uh, I got to walk around see some of the street food. I mean, this is some more sauteed that this guy's cooking. They have very different many uh, fruits and vegetables on the street, such as these mangoes. Um, as these papayas and a version of like a watermelon. Uh, they had lots of chicken and beef being cooked on the streets, as well as various other stuff that I wasn't quite willing to uh, try out. Um, they do have a lot of street vendors and a lot of street food available for the local population. And then, mind you, this was walked around Jakarta. And I was able to take some time and, of course, eat safely in some restaurants. You know, I tried some of the uh, sautés that they have, uh, some of the rice, which is a uh, big staple food within Indonesia. Um, and of course, I got to try a lot of uh, airplane food. Um, actually, the airplane food was generally a mix of the different cultures where the planes were flying to and from. Uh, this was like a, uh, a chicken curry, which there is a big influence from India. One of the next countries I was able to visit is Malaysia. Um, they say that Malaysia is one of 17 mega diverse countries on Earth, and with 20% of the world's animal species residing there. And here are some various uh, photos from around Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. For breakfast, it was during a large layout of different fruits. For example, here you can see some of the melon and dragon fruit. Here they have papaya and watermelon. You would also be able to have fresh cut up kiwi, strawberry, and blueberries. Now there was various other breakfast uh, dishes that they had. They had a lot of dim sum. Uh, here's a uh, example of a couple of dumplings that I had for breakfast. Uh, also for lunch, there was a variety of what mainly appeared to be a large influence from India and various different fish, chickens, and beef. Here this is uh, different cooked fish and crabs. As you can see from the crabs, it's cooked a little bit different than what we have here in the States. Uh, also, you know, again with the chicken and the different curries um, at this specific restaurant. Also, you can see there was curries that you can put on the rice and consume. I uh, also tried some uh, fried octopus, which actually was not something I <laughs> liked at all. Uh, one of the other foods that I disliked the most was this rojack dipping sauce that you can dip various fruits in and was usually kind of part of the end of the meal uh, at the time. Yeah. This is how you eat. <laughs> this is how you eat. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. You like that one? <laughs> no, no. One of the traditional dishes is nasi lemak, which is a rice cooked in coconut milk. Uh, this uh, is a cold snack side dish as cucumber and uh, other peppers. You also have small chilies usually on the side with most of the dishes. Uh, these are pretty good and nice and hot. Another traditional dish is otak otak. It's like a mixing of fish paste and a mixture of spices. At first I didn't think it was going to be good, but I actually quite enjoyed it. Much better than this one. Half.
Once I was done with all that, we had Sindel dessert, which is like a jello type noodle with shaved coconut milk ice and red beans. It actually turned out to be really, really good, and I kind of miss it now. <laughs> I've also seen uh, durian fruit on a lot of shows, Travel Channel, Food Channel, etc., and heard stories of how bad it tasted and smelled. So what I ended up having to do was do a version that was uh, wrapped in a like cellulose type of skin with the fruit inside frozen. Um, so I had to give that a try, and uh, I think it lived up to my expectation. Hit again. Okay, it's on. Yeah. Okay. One more piece, two more. Go ahead. The more you eat, the worse it gets. The smell is very strong. And durian, they have uh, many, many types of durian. Some durian meat are sweet, and some of them are a bit, uh, how do you say, bitter. Yeah. The next stop on my trip, I went to the Philippines. Mango is one of the main uh, food staples in the Philippines. In fact, it is the national fruit of the Philippines, as well as India and Pakistan. Here are some various pictures I had taken walking around Manila. Even in downtown Manila, there was various street food vendors as well, just like in Indonesia. They had uh, different types of fried food, uh, and vegetables, and fruits. You can see the mango in the Philippines is a little bit different than the version in Indonesia. This was a lot creamier and definitely a lot sweeter. Even walking in a mall, you can see the variety and different influences from other cultures that have an impact in the Philippines. Uh, all these photos were taken walking through what we would consider a food court at the mall. Um, they had various foods displayed and various sauces to put on those foods and it was very interesting to see the variety that they did have. With the Philippines being so close to China, it also has a large influence on their foods. Here was some jellyfish that I decided to give give it a try. Okay, I'm gonna try some jellyfish. Oh, I got it. Thank you. Different. Different but good. Next stop, I flew to Japan from the Philippines. It's a four hour flight and wasn't too bad and I wish the plane actually flew at this speed, make it a little bit quicker. I arrived in Japan late in the evening and was able to do some uh, sightseeing around the downtown Tokyo area. Um, I had seen a couple shows, one by Anthony Bourdain and a show of his called The Layover. And since I had a 27 hour layover, I figured I'd follow in his footsteps. Uh, one of the main things I was looking forward to having over in Japan, obviously, was sushi. One of the stops in Anthony Bourdain's layover show was a sushi restaurant called Yusuda. Uh, it is named after the chef who originally was from Japan, went to New York, and has since returned back to Japan. 
Like, I think we would be, we'd make it better. Let's get to know our people. We did so much walking this, yesterday and the day before. I, this is, I've been here like a week and a half now. Yeah. And like today, my body, like yesterday, I think my body was just going to like, no. We're not walking. <laughs> so like, we have to go to this place and do this thing. I think I felt Watching him make sushi was like watching a master chef for sure. Um, he would pick whatever he wanted to give you and he would give it to you. So a lot of this stuff, I don't even know what it was. But all I can say, it was very, very good. And now I feel like sushi here in the U.S. is the equivalent of me now going to Taco Bell thinking I'm having real Mexican food. But this food was delicious. I found my uh, time in Japan to be very exciting and fun. In fact, the next morning, I was able to wake up to having a, a great experience with a typical Japanese earthquake. Well, thank you for watching. I'm glad I got this opportunity to be able to show you some of the foods and the areas of Southeast Asia and look forward to another trip.